Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the opportunity uh, for us to gather together and and connect with one another and and grow. This task force, when created by Joseph, Nathan, and Jeff, they set out with crazy goals, audacious goals. And we still have those today, but they knew from day one that it would take your hand in this to be able to accomplish it. And that people would look back on what we've done over decades and say that that God's hand had to be in that for them to be able to do that. And I'm so grateful and privileged and honored to be a part of that. Every single person here, I, I pray for safety over their lives as they go out and serve those that put themselves in harm's way. And, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of them. I, I'm grateful for the families that they represent, the communities that they represent, and this mission, vision, and values. And Lord, as we go through this day, I ask that you open every single person in this room's heart, open their mind to be able to figure out what the barriers are, where those blind spots are in their life that they need to break through. Lord, with everything we do, help us to keep you at the center of it. In Christ's name we pray, amen. very little about insurance and apps, you begin to realize that this is about you. This is about growing you because we have a core belief. We, when we three started and then Tyler came on, we had a core belief that, that if you grow the person, if you change the individual, the circumstances will change. We had a core belief in that. And we never stepped away from it. We don't step away from it when we're ahead in app count, when we're behind in app count, because we know that the circumstances will all of, always follow the individual and the commitment and the vision. send a note of appreciation at the two minute task to send a note of appreciation uh, three times a week. And so Google finds the smallest chunk is 15 minutes. It finds a 15 minute chunk for me to write a letter of appreciation. And I was sharing last night with somebody, I don't know who, but I was trying to send, I, my challenge was someone was underperforming. Uh, my challenge was, could I send a note of appreciation to someone who was underperforming? And I did. And I actually found a way to engage it was genuine, it wasn't passive aggressive. I was like, here's the way that I think I really appreciate you. Unlock the whole conversation. Now, there are things, our lives are full of these things. Things that we know we should do, but, and we're like, I'm choosing to be awesome, but then if we look at our activities, we haven't made time. What I've found is, if you have someone gently reminding you, if you have an app, if you have something that reminds you to do it, uh, you'll, you'll do more of those things. And guess what a person who sends notes of appreciation is? How's that identity? What's the identity of a person who sends notes of appreciation? Okay. Great. Yes, I'm that person. I've become that person. I chose it. Chose it? Chose it? Chose? What's it? Done chose. chose. Yeah. Done. Chose. done. <laughs> I done chose it. And then I convinced myself, right? Remember we talked earlier about trust? Can you trust yourself? You can if you convince yourself, right? You say, oh, 
you know, I, I'm not a person who shows compassion. Well, maybe I am because I just wrote three notes of compassion last week or appreciation. So maybe I am a, a more empathetic than I thought I was. Or I'm not a person who, who is, uh, you know, I'm not into that whole mind, mindfulness thing. Well, maybe you are because you just meditated seven times last week because you had an a, a alert that popped up on your phone. How many other things does your brain just fill in for you? What are the stories that it tells for you that you're not even conscious are being filled in? Now this is going to be the scariest thing that I tell you all day long, so take a deep breath, get nice and centered. Your brain is processing about 400 billion bits of information every single second. You are consciously aware of 2,000 of those. So if y'all want to do the math with me really quick, that means that 99.9999999% of the time, you're operating from your subconscious brain. What are the stories that your subconscious brain knows? Have you explored them? My guess is you probably haven't. And if you have, have you worked to change them? It's a whole nother level. I got screwed on that last deal, so I'm not going to trust someone on this deal. We talked about trust earlier, right? My closest friend stabbed me in the back last time. I think someone mentioned this, right? My closest friend stabbed me in the back. That was an outcome. And so I am actually allowing that outcome to form an identity in me that I should not be a trusting person because it happened one time or two times or ten times. But I bet if you could dig into your history, you'd find 10,000 times where it didn't happen. Maybe 10 million times where you trusted someone with a secret or something simple, even like, hey, hold this or look into this or can you give me directions or where do I go over here or what's this? And someone just gave you good information and didn't stab you in the back, didn't hurt you, right? And so we've selected to ignore 10 million examples of awesomeness to hold on to three outcomes that hurt us. And not just hold on to those outcomes, we actually change our identity. I'm honored to be able to speak to you guys, I really am. And for the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how to raise your standards. Um, just really how to raise standards in general because it's how do we raise the standards for ourselves, it's how we raise the standards for our teams, and then ultimately how we raise the standards for this company, for our task force. And it should be logical, I hope, that in that progression, in the way I just said that, that the way we raise the standard for our organization, for the task force, is by raising the standard for our teams. And the way we raise the standard for our teams is by raising the standards for ourselves. I found out a little statistic the other day. They said the average person has 75,000 thoughts a day. Scott counted it. <laughs> <laughs> But the interesting thing is 91% of those thoughts are the same pretty much every day. And so really the difference between what makes somebody ordinary or extraordinary falls in those 9% of thoughts that we have throughout our day. And so my goal over the next few minutes is to start to change those 9% thoughts, to maybe offer a new perspective, a new way for you to look at the world, that will ultimately raise your standard. Another word for standard is your identity. It's how you see you. It can also be seen as the governor on your life. And there's an analogy that I'm gonna use throughout the talk. It's a simple analogy, but you know everything we do is, is simple, not easy. And that analogy is a thermostat. So if you think about a thermostat, I'm sure there's one on the wall here somewhere. If that thermostat regulates the temperature inside this room. Regardless of what's happening outside, the thermostat is able to bring that temperature back to wherever it's set. 
And so as we look at our, our standards or our identities, it is where we set our thermostat. And so what I know is in life, you'll have seasons of, of great success where, where things are heating up and you're operating at a high level and you have momentum carrying you through. But you'll figure out a way to bring yourself back down to wherever your thermostat's set. You'll figure out a way to bring yourself back down to where your identity is, toward the standard that you've put on yourself. The good thing is the opposite is also true because you're gonna go through times in your life where you're gonna have struggles, obstacles, where there's gonna be a cold season, right? And you'll figure out a way to bring that temperature back up to wherever that identity is. And so the key to figuring out this process is really self-awareness. It's first coming to the understanding of where's your thermostat set right now? At what temperature are you currently living your life? What I know is most people think their life is dictated by external circumstances. They spend their entire life trying to control what's outside of them. But the thing about identity is it's an internal game. Too often people don't work on changing their identity. They focus on producing external results. Does that sound familiar to anybody in here? So I'll say that again. They don't work on changing their identity. They just work on producing external results. Trey, stand up. Probably one of the first examples everybody thought of, especially if you were here last year. So Trey is, is the perfect example of someone who was working herself to death, working her face off because she found her worth, her identity, in her production and what she could produce for the team, for what she could produce for the task force. And man, it was incredible. This time, last year, this room with what happened to Trey. In that chair, yeah, in that chair with what happened to Trey when Sean Whalen spoke. And it was just a magical moment seeing her for the first time make this transformation and realize her identity and, and make this decision to know I'm going to focus on me and I'm going to focus on what's inside me. But did the production go down? No, it went up. And it's been the most beautiful transformation I've ever For saying, you can sit down, or I'll get more emotional. <clears throat> Sandra, stand up. Sandra was sitting next to you, I think, right next to Trey. Exact same thing. And <sighs> over this last year with Sandra, the change has been huge. Me and Sandra used to butt heads a lot. A lot. And a lot of that was me. Some of it was probably you. And this is probably a, it was a, probably a character flaw of mine, but I had a hard time loving you because you didn't love yourself. But man, over the last year in seeing how you've changed and seeing how you've risen to the occasion because you were given a huge challenge this year and seeing you go through that I love you and I'm extremely proud of you you can sit down <laughs> um, Lee where's Lee you can stand up Lee wasn't here last year but man, I have never, I don't know that I've ever seen someone 
raise their standard, elevate their identity like you have. It's, it's, un, it, like it, it's unreal. Like you're almost unrecognizable now. <laughs> There's a little piece of confidence we need to still work on. But, but I'm so proud of you. Like, it's not, it's not just in the production. I mean, like, if you've seen Lee's numbers lately, it's across the board. It's like insane volume, insane premium, in even more insane conversion. Like, it's, it's the triple threat. It's like, it's, it's crazy. But it's not just that. It's just in the way you interact with everybody, the way you talk on Foxer, the way you and I interact. Like, it's, you're just a completely different person. And it's awesome. You sit down. <laughs>